All right. So like I said, I'm just jump off, jump off camera here, and we'll just focus on my screen. Now, you sent over some questions for us to work on. Is it important that we get the problems done or ones like them or just these? What would be best to help you? Do you want to do the problems that we sent over or just something similar? Okay, something similar. You okay. All right. So uh, the first problem on your, your paper there is uh, it's a whole number and you're subtracting a, a fraction basically from it. So let's just do something like six minus uh, one and one third. Okay. So there's uh, the best way to proceed here is to uh, understand that on the right here, it's really minus one minus one third, which may look weird, but that is that is what's happening. Um, this may be different than, than what you've seen in class as well. So if it is, you know, just go with it for the moment. This six, we're gonna break apart into five plus one, five plus one here. And then we've got this minus one, minus one third. So you end up taking this five and subtracting one, which is four. And then what's left over is this one minus one third. So we're gonna kind of come off to the side here to do that. Do you remember how to subtract a whole number and a fraction like this, What what is required? Okay, so you got to make a common denominator. So right now it's one over one. What is the common denominator between the one and the three? Um, three. Three, good. So this becomes three over three minus one over three. You keep the bottom, but subtract the top. So what does the top become? Two. Two, and then you bring that back. That's your, that's your final answer, four and two thirds. Does that look at all familiar to what you guys are doing in class? Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, so let's try another one here. Let's say, and, and if you want, if you ever need to get something down and, and I'm going too fast, just say, hey, Matthew, I need some time to get it down. I'd be happy to pause and let you get it written down here. So let's look at another one here. Let's say it's uh, six minus two and five eighths, right? So again, on the on the right here, it's really minus two minus five eighths, right? So because there's no fraction with the six, you're gonna break get the six apart into the five and one, five plus one, minus two minus five over eight. Is that okay, what I've done so far? Yep. All right. And then again, you kind of alternate here. You, you skip one. Five minus two is three. Then you got to come off to the side here. What is, and take one and subtract five eighths. Okay, and that's a lot like the previous one. What did we do to be able to subtract these in the previous problem? So we turned uh, the whole number one into a fraction. All right. And then we did the least common denominator, and that would be eight. Okay. So what does this become when you subtract? Three over eight. Three over eight, good. And that comes back over here. And that's your final answer. Is that okay? All right, are you ready to try one on your own? Yep. Okay. All right, let's go uh, nine minus five and two sevenths. So first you're gonna break up the nine okay. and you're going to put it, um, um, Wait, actually, so first you're going to do um, 9 minus 5 minus 2 sevenths. Okay, and good. then you're going to break up the 9 into 8 
plus one. Good. And then after that, you do minus five and minus two sevenths. And then you're going to figure out what's eight minus five, and that will be three. And then you're going to go off the side, and you're going to figure out one subtract two sevenths. Good. And you're going to turn the whole number one into a fraction, one over one. And then you find the least common denominator of one and seven, and that will be seven. Okay. So you subtract. 7 over 7 minus 2 sevenths, and that will equal 5 sevenths. Very good. And you go back over here, and then you do uh, 3 as the whole number, and then 5 3 sevenths. Very good. Excellent. All right, so let's look at a problem like uh, number 2 now. So the uh, problem. Problem number two, they're asking you to add two numbers, so it'd be like three and uh, three fourths plus five and one half. Okay. So it's actually very similar to the last. It's 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 three plus three fourths plus five plus one half. So whatever whatever the operator is, it, it, it goes between the, the, the fraction, the mix, the whole number and the fraction. The it's not written, but the first one is positive. Um, and then you again kind of combine every other one. So three plus five is eight. And then you come off the side and you're like, okay, how do I how do I add these two fractions? Maybe maybe you already know how to do that. Uh, I think you do least common denominator. Okay, what would that be in this case? Uh four. It is four. So you can keep the three fourths. What does the one half become when you put a four on the bottom? Um, it becomes. Like, how do you go from two to four? What did you multiply by? Uh, by two. By two? So you multiply the top by two? What does that become? Oh, um, two. Two. Okay. What does this add up to? It equals uh, five over four. Five over four. Now this is the first time we've seen this. This is uh this is the number that is really, and I don't know how you guys are doing it. If you're convert the, do you know how to convert it to a mixed number? Um, you divide it. Okay. Can you tell me what that becomes as a mixed number? Um. One as the whole number and then one fourth. Okay, so now you, you bring that back. So it's really eight plus the one and the one fourth. So you can add the eight and the one to get nine and one fourth. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's just, just, just briefly make sure you know how to do this. Um, how would you write 10 over eight as a mixed number? Um, so you would divide okay. 10 divided by eight, and then that would go into 10 one time. And then you do 10 minus eight, and that would be two. So then it would be remainder two since eight doesn't go into two. And then you would write one as the whole number, two as the numerator and eight as the denominator. All right, so does this fraction though, does it reduce? Yes, it does. You know, okay, so that's the next thing to look for. Like I know I'm asking you to do a lot, but that's the next thing to think about is like, does this fraction reduce? It does, what does it reduce? To? It reduces to one fourth. Very good, okay. All right, so that was just a little diversion here. I do think you understand that. So let's uh, let's try another problem here. Let's say it's a six, six and three fourths plus uh, two and one eight. So this is very much like the one I just did. Do you want to try it on your own or do you want another example for us to work through? Um, I think I could try it on. 
Okay. It is very much like the one we just did before for this previous problem. So first you're gonna do six plus three fourths plus two and plus one eighth. Good. And then you're gonna do six, um, six plus two, and that will be eight. Good. And then you're gonna do um, so then you're going to take the three fourths and you're going to add the one eight, okay. but then you're gonna to have to do LCD. So then that will equal eight LCD. Okay. And then the other fraction would become six eighths. Okay. So then you're gonna do um, eight divided by six, and eight. you have to do it into one time. No, no, no. you've got to, you've got to add, you got to add the tops first. Add the tops, oh, yeah. keep the bottom. You have to do six eighths plus one eighth, and now it equals seven eighths. And okay. then you do. You divide eight divided by seven. And but this time, but this time it's uh smaller. So this one's slightly different. Yeah, it's smaller. And in the earlier previous problem, it was it was larger. It was five over four. So it, when the when the when the top number is smaller, you just keep it. You don't have to make any changes. Okay. So you're you just bring that back over. Okay. Eight and seven. Okay, let's try another one here like this. Uh, let me try a five, seven tenths plus two and one half. Two and one half. So give this one a try, please. Okay. So first you're going to do five plus seven tenths plus two plus one half. And then you're going to do five plus two, and that's seven. And then you're, you are going to do three fourths. I mean, this is, uh, yeah. seven tenths, seven tenths. And you're going to add the one half. And so um, you're gonna have to find the LCD of 10 and 2, and that will be 5. No, no, it's, it's got to be, you always try the other, you always see if the, the smaller number can go into the larger. Okay. So it would go into the 10, um, It would, I think it would go into the 10 five times. Right, right, that's good. Okay, so then you're going to do, um, you're going to do seven tenths and then you're gonna see if it's into five and five times. Okay, so what is the top number? Um, it would be thirty-five. No, no, you're, you're, you're the, the seven tenths stays the same. Oh. It's so, the one half that you turn the two into a ten. So by multiplying by five, so the one, you also have to multiply by. Oh, so it'll be five tenths. Yes. Then after that, you're going to um, bring around the fraction to. Um, what does it add up to? Oh, it adds up to uh, 12 tenths. Okay. And then you could reduce that and you could do 
12 divided by 2 and 10 divided by 2. And that would okay. equal um, 6 over 5. Okay, give me that as a mixed, mixed number, please. Okay. So the whole number would be 1, and then the numerator would be 1, and then the denominator would be 5. Okay, so 1 and? 1 and um, 1 fifth. Good. So bring that back over. And that will be 7. I mean, yeah, 7 plus 1 fifths, 1 1 fifths, and that will equal 8 1 fifths. Very good. Okay. All right. Now, I noticed a couple things there, so we're going to work on those now. Um, uh, when we're adding fractions like one third plus um, seven over 12, okay, one of the first things you can do is see does the smaller number go into the larger? Like, can you go from three to 12 by multiplying? Yes. What would you multiply by? Uh, by four. By four. Okay. So that tells us that's one strategy for adding fractions is you try to go from the smaller to the larger. The The larger one just stays the same. But then you, you, you'd say, okay, well, what did I multiply three by to get 12? Well, that's four. So you're going to multiply the one by what number? Four. Four. So what does that become? Four. Four twelfths. What does this add up to? Um, 11 twelfths. 11 twelfths, okay. So we'll try another one here. Let's say it's 11 over 36 plus uh, one ninth, okay? So you always look to see, does, does the smaller go into the larger? Um, yes. It goes into it by four times. Okay, so it's 36 and 36. So give me the... So... The two fractions. So first on the right, um, for the right fraction, um, it would be 9 over 36. I mean, uh, 1 over 36. And then... No, wait, wait, we're talking about the one on the right here. This, this was the right, correct? Yeah. Okay, so you multiply 9 by 4. So what do you multiply the top number by? 4. 4, four also. So what does that become? What does that become? 4. 4. You said, you said two different numbers than that. What does the one on the left become? Um, the left, that will become... It already has a bottom of 36. It would become 11. There's no, yeah, there's no change. Okay. Go ahead and add those together. Uh, fifth, I mean, yeah, 15, 36. Does that reduce? Uh, mm, so you start with two. Two doesn't work in both. Does three work in both? No. If 15 is divisible by three, and so is 36. Uh, Try that one more time. So. So it it go into thirty six. So then, so that would be the top would be five, and then the bottom would be twelve. Good, yeah, that works. Okay, let's try another one here. Let's say I wanted you to uh, nine sixteenths plus. Uh, let's go uh, one. So first, you're going to see if 2 goes into 16, and it does, and it would go into 
16 eight times. Okay. And then, and then you're going to do um, one times eight, and that'll be eight. Okay, good. And then the other would be nine. All right, so go ahead and add these together. It would be 17 sixteenths. Okay, and what is that as a mixed number? Uh, one as the whole number, one as the numerator, and 16 as the denominator. You got it. All right. Okay, so we're actually going to stop there for today. Uh, really good job. Um,